I made a career switch from an engineer to a data analyst. So how did I do this? I know it's the start of the year, so many people might want to make this change. So what I'm going to do is provide the information of what I did alongside the resources. So looking at qualifications, training, etc., which can be found in the description alongside timestamps for each point in the video. And of course, if you're new here, my name is Charles, also known as Jude, and I'm a technology consultant with a focus on data analytics over here in the UK. So a little bit before the career switch. Now during school, I really liked maths and physics. So one of the parts to take is studying mechanical engineering and that's what I did. And I followed through with this by my first career job out of university being a technical sales engineer within the hip hop industry. Now over time, more and more, I realized one, that the job just wasn't as stimulating or fulfilling as I thought it would be. And two, that engineers just don't get paid enough. And this alongside having people around me working in the tech industry that were, of course, getting paid well, enjoying their job, and me just having a genuine interest and curiosity about what was going on and maybe even getting involved was pushing me towards the career, which made me make my first steps where I obtained the opportunity to be part of a technology graduate scheme, which started my career or my journey as a data analyst. Now, at the start of the journey is understanding the key skills and one of the key skills is having an analytical mindset. Now, by having an analytical mindset, this allows you to ask questions, the right questions, to obtain information that will allow you to solve complex problems for your clients, your stakeholders. Now, with this being said, you need to do this as part of the requirements gathering. And this looks at what insights they require to solve the problems, solve the situations they have so that they can make the strategic decisions that they need to make for their businesses, their companies, whatever their situation may be. And this goes hand in hand with the next point, which is being able to interpret data and of course, tell an easy to understand story. So once you've analyzed the data and got the insights you need, you need to be able to visualize this or present this in a way that's easy to understand for everybody involved. Now, a lot of people don't really like numbers. They find it confusing. So you need to be able to explain this to me like I'm five. This makes it digestible for everybody involved because it has a start, a middle and an end, which has added value because it adds a human element or human touch to what you're trying to present to people. And of course, who doesn't remember a great story? And then the third point is keep learning. Now, the world of data is advancing every day and is essential to any great business. I would even go as far as any operational business nowadays. And data can be provided in many different formats. So you need to be able to use different tools, different programming languages to be able to analyze that data to actually get insights that are of value. And this goes from structured data, so using things like SQL or Excel to unstructured data where you may have to use other things like Hadoop and even Python. So what tools do you need? The tools you need are based on the type of data you have, which I started to allude to in the previous point. And so data can be categorized in two different ways. Structured data, which is relational databases and tables and unstructured data, which are things like images, voice notes, text files. Now with structured data, you would use tools like Excel, Python, R, SQL, and then BI tools like Power BI. Now for unstructured data, you would use tools like Hadoop, MongoDB, and then Python R once again. And of course, I know this seems like a lot of different tools to be naming, but honestly speaking, it's just best to start with one, really just get to grips with it. And then as time goes on, as project requirements are requested for, jump in on different ones that are based on what you need at that moment in time. Personally speaking, the first tool I formally started using in the workplace was Excel. And I would advise anyone starting with analysis to also start with Excel due to its accessibility, which is in two different ways. The first way is due to it's easy to read and understand syntax, making analysis on data easy to do. And the second reason is because Excel is used in many different organizations, if not all, as a fundamental analysis tool, which will always be of benefit in having, of course, as your stack of analysis tools within your career. 
Now the next tool you should learn is a BI tool slash platform. And for me personally, it's just Power BI. And this is for two reasons, because my company was using it at the time, but also because it's part of the Microsoft stack. The syntax used between Excel and Power BI sometimes are very similar. So of course, once again, being very easy to learn and of course understand. Now with a combination of both tools together, you can provide reports and dashboards that can provide real insight to stakeholders and clients. And there's other BI tools that you can use if you wanted to. So one commonly known one being Tableau. Now this is for low volume data situations and it's the limitation with using Excel which leads me to the next tool you should use for high volume data, which will be SQL. Now SQL is really good because it allows you to analyze large volumes of data found within databases through its query functions, which Excel just doesn't have the capacity to do. And of course the databases can now be linked with Power BI, so you can still get those great reports and dashboards that clients and stakeholders want to see. And then the final tool will just be tools used for extra manipulation or even moving towards data science like Python or Hadoop. Now to start learning the tools, all you need is an internet connection and a computer. And some of the resources that I provided below actually provide you with the opportunity to practice the syntax online. And for the ones that don't, you can use a free resource called Kaggle.com, which has data sets where you can, of course, analyze the data and visualize it. Now, alongside this, there's a plethora of YouTube channels that I've put down in my description that provided me with invaluable insight and information throughout my journey so far. How do you land that first job? Now, you've probably at this point done some training and qualifications. So what I'd start with is your CV and updating this with all the relevant experience and your qualifications, of course. So within your work experience section, highlighting this and making sure that your relevant experience is first, I would even add a skill section to detail all the different tools that you can now use and maybe even add in the expertise if you're very good at them at this point. Now with LinkedIn, I would not be shy about any of the qualifications you get. So of course, just post about it. You know, at this point, this will allow you to be like Tupac and have. So if you don't have any relevant work experience or you're utilizing places like Kaggle, the data sets, then what you can actually do is host your personal project online, places like GitHub, so that interviewers can see what you're actually capable of. So to conclude, the career of a data analyst can definitely be demanding or rewarding career by being able to create and express yourself, but also lucrative through clear development and prospects. And so if you've gotten any useful information or insight, then please give this video a like, comment about what you liked, of course, and subscribe. And until next time, take care and peace.